Welcome to the Freeport Connection. This is Tommy. This uh, video is on your uh, this day wrestling history from May 10th and 11th. 1981, Vern Gagne announced he was retiring as AWA World Heavyweight Champion. And he vacated the title. It was his ninth or tenth reign, depending on what record you use. And it would later be awarded to number one contender Dick Bockwinkle, who Gagne had defeated for the belt on July 18th, 1980. 1985, the first WWF Sunday night's main event was held in Long Island, New York. It will be televised the next night on NBC. 2001, Vince McMahon announces the closure of the XFL. 2005, the, Ama the Amazing Red received a tryout with WWE taking on TM Punk in a dark match that opened a SmackDown taping in Redding, Pennsylvania. Red wasn't signed, but would find his niche nationally in TNA's exhibition. Fair enough. The same taping featured featuring a lot of star Jimmy Jacobs wrestling Eddie Ever uh, Eddie Guerrero at about that was broadcasted. In 2017, TNA released for, former NWA World Tag Team Champions, the Naturals, Chase Stevens, and Andy Douglas. Events in, in 1990, NWA held a live event at the Dome Arena in Rochester, New York. And the matches were NWA US Tag Team Champion Brian Pillman, dubbing for a little butcher defeated the Cuban assassin. Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane <coughs> defeated Johnny Ace and Johnny Stewart. Mike Rotunda defeated Bam Bam Bigelow with Sir Oliver Hubbardink by disqualification. NWA World Tag Team Champion Rick Scott Sanger defeated Doom of Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. <clears throat> NWA US Tag Team Champions Brian Pimlin and Tom Zink defeated the Samoan Savage, Tongo Kid, and Samu. <clears throat> also in 1990, the WWF held a live event in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Akeem defeated Jimmy Super Plus Luka, Brutus Beefcake, defeated the Genius, Dino Bravo defeated Red Rooster, Bushwhackers fought Greg Valentine and Honky Tonk Man to a double DQ. World <coughs> WWF World Champion, the Ultimate Warrior, defeated Mr. Perfect. And Brutus B. Kate won a 12 man battle royal. 1997, ECW ran the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The first event was held in ECW's home base following the barely legal pay per view. Nicknamed Chapter 2. Shane Douglas and Bam Bam Bigelow from the Triple Threat tag team defeated the Pit Bulls during the match. Rick Rude came out and carried the fan team to the back. Axel Rotten defeated Chris Chetty. The FBI of Lil Guido and Tracy Sweaters defeated Spike Dudley and Balls Mahoney, subbing for an injured Mike T. Ripley. ECW World Tag Team Champions, the Eliminators defeated PG-13. Tommy Dreamer with Gila McGillicuddy defeated Louis Piccoli. Big D. Dudley and Devon Dudley defeated the Gangsters. Taz and Chris Candido defeated Sabu and Rob Van Dam. ECW World Champion Terry Funk defeated Raven, the Sandman, and Stevie Richards in a four way dance in 2014. Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling Global Awards was held live on live pay per view from Ted Reed Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, with an attendance of 1500. The event was originally billed as Border Wars and it had been in 2012 and 13, with the exception of one. In a promotional match, wrestlers from NJPW and Ring of Honor were kept separated from each other, with the bookers from each promotion handling their own half of the show. Pre-show of Tadarius Thomas with Jimmy Jacobs defeated the romantic touch of Rex Titus. On the iPay-Per-View, Michael Bennett with Maria defeated ACH. Michael Elton defeated Taki Watanabe. And the Briscoe brothers of Jay and Mark Briscoe defeated the decade of Jimmy Jacobs and BJ Whitmer with Tadarius Thomas and Red Dragon Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish in a three way tag team match. Cedric Alexander defeated Roger Strong as the decade was banned from inside. The Young Bucks of Nick and Matt Jackson defeated Forever Hooligans of Alex Kozloff and Rocky Romero and Time Splitters of Alex Shelley and Kushida. To retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles in a three way tag team match. Jushin Thunder Liger and Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Chaos. 
tag team of Jado and Suzuki Nakamura. Jay Lethal, Richard Martini defeated Silas Young, Matt Taven, and Tommaso Fiampa to retain the Ring of Honor TV title in a four corner survival match. Bullet Club of AJ Styles and Carl Anderson defeated Chaos of Ghetto and Kazuchika Okada. Adam Cole defeated Kevin Steen to retain the Ring of Honor World title. Title changes on this day in history. 1946, Buddy Roberts defeated Luke Dez to win the NWA Texas Heavyweight title in Houston, Texas. 1966, the Assassin's two defeated Stan Kowalski and the great Matsuda in the final of the tournament to win the vacant TSW United States Tag Team title. 1968, the Big O, Johnny Valiant, under a mask, defeats Mr. Wrestling to win the NWA Georgia Heavyweight title in Atlanta, Georgia. 1968, also, the Sicilians of Lou, Captain Lou Albano, and Tony Altimore defeated the WWF World Champion Bruno Sabatino and that man, Tony Marino, in the main event of a WWF event in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, 1980. Ricky Jim Dragon, Steamboat, and Jay Lloyd Youngblood defeated Ray Stevens and Greg Valentine to win the NWA World Tag Team titles in Greensboro, North Carolina. 1999, on Raw, Sable defeated Deborah in an evening down match. However, Commissioner Shawn Michaels claimed that Deborah is the winner and she lost her dress. As Michaels awards the WWF women's title to Deborah. 1999, Atlantis defeated Dr. Wagner Jr. to win the CMLL World Light Heavyweight title. First days, WCW was Air Paris. 737. Uh, former NWA tag team star Jerry Brown turned 77. And two time WWF slash WWE Intercontinental Champion William Regal turned 46. And Tito Oliva Santana turned 61. Also, some sources uh, give today as the birthday of WWE Hall of Famer Gordon Ganya, who, accordingly, according to said sources, would be would have been 90. Cannot confirm. The accuracy of the sources, but as yet other sources give the date February 26th, and the year of 1926 was birthday, birthday. In a memoriam on this day, in 1983, Wrestling World lost famed promoter Frank Tanay at the age of 70. Tanay first became involved with wrestling in a secretarial role at the Queensbury Athletic Club, who were soon Moving to the new premises at the Maple Leaf Garden, the athletic club controlled the local wrestling promotion, and today <coughs> eventually ascended the ranks to become its booker and keeper. 1939, QAC owner Jack Corcoran died suddenly of influenza, leaving today to take the reins. Promotion struggled to stay afloat while today, a twenty was. Learning the ropes as while Bill Longs Longson was the only top draw left in the area. Eventually, after a great deal of work on his part, Gripper Billy Watson was elevated to main event status and a star, and a star was born. Watson, drawing power almost single handedly, saved the financial situation of the promotion, which in turn allowed Tony to bring in more stars for him to feud with. Eventually, Tony brought Ball is taken the NWA St. Louis territory in attempt in attempt to bring yet more stars to his promotion Montreal, and Toronto did not receive the NWA backing until 1949. His promoting abilities and respect within the wrestling business saw him elected NWA president for one term in 1960-61. Tony remained involved with the three promotions well until 1970. But had gradually begun to step away from the active duties. Eventually, control of the Canadian territories was passed to Watson, and he sold his stake in St. Louis. Kenny lived out a quiet retirement and died peacefully in his sleep whilst visiting Hong Kong. His status was such that his Paul Bears included Sam Nuchnik, Billy Watson, Vince McMahon Sr., Gene, uh, Jim Kanitsky, and Jim Crockett. Now for May 11th. 1953, New York State Athletic Commission lifts a ban on tag team wrestling. 
1976, Saiji Saga, Sakaguchi wins in JPW World League, defeating Pedro, Pedro Morales in the finals, 1985, WWF Saturday Night's Main Event, aired for, for, for the first time, 1989, Steve Austin makes his professional wrestling debut. Events in 1985, the WWF very first edition of Saturday Night's Main Event aired on NBC, scoring an 8.8 .8 rating. This was the first time that a network aired wrestling in 34 years. The show was taped the previous night in Union, Uniondale, New York at the Nassau Coliseum. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and the U.S. Express with Michael Turner and Barry Windham with Lou Albano defeated George Steele and WWF Tag Team Champion the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov with Freddie Valaki. When Windham pinned Steele with a roll up after Sheik and Volkov refused to tag Steele. WWF Champion Hulk Hogan with Mr. T defeated Bob Orton Jr. with Roddy Piper by disqualification when Piper punched Hogan from the floor while Hogan had Orton pinned. After hitting the leg drop, Orton and Piper attacked Hogan and Mr. T with Paul Orndorff making the save. WWF Women's Champion Wendy Richter pinned the fabulous Moolah by reversing a slam into a small package to retain the title. Young Kelly Dog with his mom pinned Pete Dowdy. In 1996, AAA, Triple Mania 4 A was held at the International Amphitheater in Chicago, Illinois, making it the first major AAA event to be held in the United States, except the Win World Clyde event, which was the Coke promotion with WCW, with an attendance of 2,676. Jerry Estrada and Human Two Guerrero defeated El Pantera and Super Calo in a two out of three falls match. Cybernetico and El Pacito and Mosca del Merced defeated Octagon Ultimo Dragon and La Parca in a six man Lucha Libre rule tag team match. Conan and Pero Aguero defeated Peros Jr. and Cien Cross in a lumberjack match. In 1997, WWF Junior House 15, a cold day in hell. Was held at the Richmond Coliseum in Virginia with an attendance of 9,381. Free for all match, uh, Rockabilly. Uh, so Rockabilly, Billy Gunn defeated uh, Jesse James, Road Dog. Well, yeah, former DX members went against each other. Hunter Hearst Helmsley with China defeated Flash Funk. Mankind defeated Rocky Maya via the Nation of Domination. Crush, Savio Vega, and Farouk. I don't remember Crush being a Nation of Domination. Well, defeated Ahmed Johnson in a gauntlet match. Ken Shamrock defeated Vader with a no holds barred match. Undertaker defeated Steve Austin to retain the WWF title. Post pay per view dark match, the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal defeated the WWF Tag Team Champions, the British Bulldogs, and Owen Hart by disqualification. Bulldog Hart retained the titles. In 2018, a sacrifice featured one night. 18 Deuces Wild Tournament to crown the new TNA Tag Team Champions. It was held at the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida with an attendance of 900. Team 3D, Brother Ray and Devon, defeated James Storm with Jackie Moore and Sting in a Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament quarterfinal match. Rhino and Christian Cage defeated Robert Roode and Booker T in a Deuces Wild Tag Team Tournament quarterfinal match. Latin America Exchange uh, of Homicide and Hernandez with Hector Guerrero defeated Matt Morgan and Kip James <coughs> in a Deuce Wild Tag Team Tournament quarterfinal match. Super Eric and AJ Styles defeated Awesome Kong with Raisha Saheed and Billy uh, BG James in a Deuce Wild Tag Team <coughs> Tournament quarterfinal match. Kaz won a 10, 10, a 10 man X Division Terror Row match, earning a spot in the main event to replace the injured Kurt Angle. Also in the match were Shark Boy, Chris Sabre, Consequence Screen, Alex Shelley, Gay Lethal, Curry Man, Sanjay Dutt, Johnny Divine, and Jimmy Ray. Team 3D defeated Christian Cage and Rhino in a Deuce of Wild Tag Team semifinal match. Latin America Exchange with Hector Guerrero defeated AJ Styles and Super Eric 
in the tag, tag, tag team tournament, tournament final match. Gail Kim and Roxy Laveau win the 10 women. TNA Knockouts Makeover Battle Royal. Also in the match were Angelina Love, Elvis Sky, Salinas, ODB, Tracy Brooks, Jackie Moore, Rocker Khan, and Chrissy Henry. Gail Kim defeated Roxy Laveau in the latter match to become the number one contender for the knockout title and forcing Roxy to have her hair, her head shaved. Latin America Exchange. Abathon Hernandez with Hickner Guerrero defeated Team 3D in the finals of the Deuce of Wild Tournament to win the vacant TNA Tag Team title. Samoa Joe defeated Scott Sander with Petey Williams and Rockathon. And Kaz in a three way match to retain the TNA World Title. Title changes on this day in history. In 1944, Frankie Chalabar defeated the great Mephisto for the Midwest Wrestling. Association World Junior Heavyweight Title in Columbus, Ohio. 1945, Jules Strongbow defeated Hans Schnabel to win the Texas Heavyweight Title in Houston, Texas. 1972, Don and Johnny Fargo, uh, Greg Hammer Valentine, defeated Dominic Danucci and Tony Parisi to win the National Wrestling Federation Tag Team Title in Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, the executioner defeated Louis Sodan and Tony Parisi to win the WWWF Tag Team title. 1976, Kill, Killer Call Cox and Bob Sweetan defeated Ted DiBiase and Dick Murdoch to win the TSW United States Tag Team titles. 1978, Giant Baba and Jumbo Sir, Sir Ruta defeated Kim Duck and Kentaro Oki to win the NWA International Tag Team titles in Osaka, Japan. 1979, Hector Guerrero and Barry Orton defeated the Twin Devils to win the NWA America Tag Team titles in Los Angeles, California. 1980, Iron Sheik defeated Jim Bronzel to win the NWA Mid Atlantic Heavyweight title in Charlotte, North Carolina. 1981, Ernie Ladd defeated Kerry Miner to win the WCCW American Heavyweight title. 2007, Mike Quackenbutch defeated Tiger Mask 4 to win the NWA Junior Heavyweight title. 2010 on SmackDown, Lay Cool of Layla and Michelle defeated Beth Phoenix in a Texas Tornado Tag Team match. Layla pinned Phoenix to win the WWE Women's title. Birthdays to, on this day in history. Uh, happy birthday to CCW regular Nick Burke, 2034. Former WCW and WWE Cruiserweight Champion Billy Kidman turned 40. Former AWA, CWA, and USWA Tag Team Champion Paul Diamond turned 53. One time WWF Junior Heavyweight Champion Mark Rollerball Rocco turned 63. 2008 King of Trios winner Vince Dorado turned 27. And Chick Fight 6 winner Daisy Hayes turned 31. In memoriam. The wrestling world lost two personalities on this date. First, three in 1992, six-time NWA middleweight champion Rene Guajardo died at the age of 59. Guajardo began training in Monterey at the age of 16 and went on to make his professional debut. About three years later, his performance was such at the MLL. Signed him after only his third professional match, a friendship with famed Rudo. Karloff Lagarde led to the information formation of their tag team, which in turn led to Guardado's first main event. Ronnie won the first major title in 1960. Defeating the straight, his trainer Orlando Vera to win his first NWA middleweight title. Later in the decade, Guajardo and Lagarde formed an alliance both in and out of the ring with Ray Mendoza. The three used their main event status to pressure EMLL promoters to improve pay and working conditions for their fellow wrestlers. During this time, Guajardo and Lagarde won their one and only tag team title. While Guajardo gave perhaps the biggest win of his career by defeating 
El Santo for the Mexican middleweight title. Bajardo continued to compete for the two middleweight title into the 1970s until the same BMLL split upon which he followed Mendoza and Lagarde to the newly formed UWA. Guajardo used his opportunity to become more involved in backstage roles for the promotion, becoming the UWA's lead promoter for the Northern Mexico. He continued to wrestle in the 80s, but it was clear that his career was winding down and he hung up his boots. For good in 1982 and 1990, Guajardo may uh, regularly travel to Europe to scout talent for UWA. Uh, talent which included Chris Benoit, Scorpio, and Owen Hart. Despite suffering from liver cancer in his later years, Guajardo still was actually working as a promoter when he succumbed to the disease. Secondly, in 2008, Famed women's wrestler Judy Grable died at the age of 72. Grable was one of the numerous wrestlers who trained under the fabulous Lula in the, in, the, in the 50s. Having initially embarked on a career as a circus or acrobat, like all of Lula's trainees, Grable started her career in Paul Bowser's Boston promotion, but was soon competing in various NWA promotions all over the United States. Grable competed in Battle Royal for the NWA Women's title in 1966. Her only shot, despite this popularity, Grable only held two major titles in her professional career, winning the NWA Georgia Women's title twice between 1958 and 1963. Well, she officially retired from wrestling in the late 60s in order to start a family with her new husband. But uh, continued to make occasional appearances until 1974. In retirement, Grable returned to school and gained a nursing qualification, living out the rest of her life as a nursing assistant in a retirement home for war veterans. Grable developed diabetes in her later years, and it was this, along with Alzheimer's disease, which would eventually claim her life. Grable's daughter, Debbie, occasionally appears in independent promotions in Washington State. And that concludes my May 10th and 11th, This Day in Wrestling History. Thanks again. Peace out. God bless. See you one more day. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, you better call me, bro.